Hi, and welcome to puzzle 5 of 150. I took the challenge to solve every advent of code puzzle there is all the way through to the new 2020 version at the end of the year. That's 150 puzzles total. And we're at number 5. Let's dig in. Day 5. Doesn't he have intern elves for this? Santa needs help figuring out which strings in his text files are naughty or nice. A nice string is one with the following properties. It contains at least three vowels. It contains at least one letter that appears twice in a row, like XX. It does not contain the strings A, B, C, D, P, Q, or Q, I, even if they are part of one of the other requirements. All right, that sounds like ridiculous requirements to me, but he's Santa. Uh, there are several examples that we'll add to our test case. Uh, as you can see, we'll be returning the number of strings that are nice. So we need to figure out how to listen or how to uh, extract the information from it to determine if it's nice. As this challenge calls for counting the number of strings that are nice, we can actually use a stream feature that uh, will filter only nice strings. So from the input, we'll take a stream. So we'll filter on the condition that is nice string returns true for a string. And then we'll just count the entries that actually pass this filter. So we'll create a function called is nice string, which will determine if the string is actually nice or not, or rather meets all the criteria. So we add some counters for the vowels, the number of doubles, and a Boolean value to see if the string is offensive or not. We need to examine every single character in this string, but we need to do some fancy uh, look ahead for it. So we'll just use a traditional for loop in which we have the index of the current character that we're looking at. So we'll first take a look at the vowels. We'll just take the character at the index within a for loop and then just look if one of the files is there and the increment the file counter for it. The next one is quite interesting. We need to take a look at all the doubles. So that means from the point that we're at, the next character should be the same as the current one. And then we'll have double. So we will say that if the index is not at the end of the string, we'll just take a look at index plus one and see if there is a same character as at the current index. And then we'll just increase the doubles counter. The last part is to see if the string is in some way offensive by having one of the pairs. I guess the easiest way would be to have a list of offensive characters and then just see if the string contains these. And if it does contain it, we'll set offensive to true. And that means that one of the conditions uh, was met. We can determine if there's more or equal to three of vowels more than zero doubles, or if the string was offensive. In, in, in that case, uh, we can return true. So it would be a nice string and else we'll just return uh, false. And that should be enough to pass our test cases. The test case passed successfully. So if we now run the test case for the real input, we should get our answer. And there it is. 236 is the answer according to our test. Let's see if it's true. Yeah, it was right. So on to part two. Realizing the error of his way, Santa has switched to a better model of determining whether the string is naughty or nice. None of the old rules apply, oh great, uh, as they are clearly ridiculous. Well, that was true. Now a nice string is one with all of the following properties. It contains a pair of any two letters that appear at least twice in the string without overlapping. All right. It contains at least one letter that which repeats with exactly one letter between them. All right. That's totally not ridiculous at all. And uh, there, of course, there's sample data again. Let's add them to a test case. So for part two, we'll just use the same input stream trick that we did with the filter. Only now with the function is nice string, not ridiculous. So now instead of three conditions, there's only two conditions, either being a pair or having a repeat string. Let's create some counters for those. We will still need to loop over every character in this string. So we can use the same uh, for loop that we did before. The first condition is to have a repeating pair. 
So from the starting position that we're at now, we take a look at the next character and then take those two and look if there's any more of those, that, that combination in the next part of the string. There's two string functions that we can use here, substring to get the pair, the pair from the string and then index off that will look from the current position all the way to the end to see if there's any uh, matching substrings in the string. Of course, we need to take into account that we don't go past the string. So we'll only look at the entries just before the end of the string. Uh, then we'll take the substring of the current value plus the one behind it or next to it. And then we'll just take the index off. And if there is any index returned by uh, the string function, then we know that there's another pair somewhere later on in the string and we'll just increase our pair counter. The second condition is that if there is a, cur a character, let's say X, and there is two positions later another X that will count as a repeat of that same character. Doesn't matter what is in between them. So all we need to do is take a look at the current index and then the index plus two in order to figure out if that is the same character. And if it is, we'll just increase the repeat counter with one. And then if we have a, at least one pair and at least one repeat, then the string will be nice. So we'll return true. And that should be enough. Let's give our test case a try. The test case succeeds. Let's take a look at the real data. And the real test input test case reveals to us that there should be 51. Let's take a look if we're right. Yay! We solved the puzzle. See you at puzzle six.